Hey everybody, Kevin here, WQ9F. Today we're gonna to take a look at this radio right here. This is the TID Radio TDH8. Now this is their second generation of this radio. I did not use the first generation, but if you browse through YouTube, I'll put a couple links down below to uh, some videos. They have made a couple changes and improvements. We're gonna take a look at this radio here today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I'd much appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you see more videos just like this one. And also have a buy me a coffee and I'll put a link in the description. If you want to support the channel that way, it'd be much appreciated. But for now, let's take a look at this radio and let's take a little bit of a dive into it. So what I want to do today is take a quick look at this radio, kind of do a brief overview, what it is, um, what it can do, and I want to take a look at one of the most important things that I like to know how to do with my handheld radios, and that is to be able to program it from the front, uh, front panel. So this radio does have Bluetooth built in, which is kind of a nice feature because it allows you to connect to an app that allows you to program this radio remotely. Um, which we'll take a look at in the next video. Uh, but if you don't have your phone, if your Bluetooth isn't working, or if it's being uh, a little crazy and you're not getting a connection, I think it's super important to be able to know how to program all your radios from the front panel, if at all possible. So I'm gonna do a quick overview on how to do that. It's really simple and uh, you know pretty easy to use. So first things first, this is a uh, dual band radio. This is the TID Radio TD-H8. This is their ham radio version. They also make a GMRS version of this radio, just in case you're interested in GMRS radio, which honestly, um, I got my GMRS license this year and I've never used it. But from what I've, um, I've kind of heard, there are some active GMRS repeaters around me. So uh, I might honestly pick that one up to go along with this. Now, TID Radio did send me this radio to take a look at, and uh, I'm gonna do that, see what it's like, learn how to program, learn how to use it, and I might take it to a couple ham fests, uh, maybe not. Uh, in the end though, this is actually gonna get given away to one of you, so stay tuned for that video. Alrighty, so here is the front panel of this radio. You can see here we do have a colorful display. Uh, it's fairly bright. Uh, at the top we have our power meter. We have our current frequency displayed. Down here it'll tell us what kind of what's on like channel A and channel B, because we are able to switch between our A and B just by pressing this button, so we're able to see two of these frequencies at once. Now, I have done a couple things to this real quick before I uh, started the video. This is more or less what it's going to look like once you turn the radio on, if it's brand new. Um, first thing, I turn the backlight on so it stays on all the time. Um, and then I changed it from um, frequent VFO mode or frequency mode to channel mode. channel mode. You can see here, frequency mode press this button right here. It'll go between VFO and memory mode. Um, I get local interference on 144.000, so you can see right there, it's kind of going off. Channel mode. So I just turned it over to this. Now on the side here, we got a couple buttons. We have our PTT or push to talk button. That's a nice orange line button. It's got some um, bumps on it, easy to find, tactile, things like that. Underneath that, we have two additional buttons, one with a kind of a dot facing outwards. What this does is it turns our flashlight on. So if I press it once, I've got flashlight going now. Press it again, you get flashy flashlight. Press it again, it turns that off. If you press and hold this, it is going to start making a emergency tone. So unless you wanna hear that, don't press and hold this. The second button right here is the, uh, this puts us into um, FM broadcast band. So if I push this, our forecast this afternoon, partly cloudy, Ohio. This, go, this went ahead and turned it into hours. FM broadcast. Right now, Here I am on FM 91.5. This is the local the uh, it's NPR station here in Chicago, WBEZ. WBEZ News. Get the, the microphone a little closer. Here you can actually see this has a fairly good and loud speaker on it, honestly. From NPR News, this is all things considered. I'm Juana. Now at the top here, we have our volume control knob. 
We have this button right here. This is a, uh, you can do a short press, long press, but this is a customizable button. Uh, so you can change what it actually does. So you can do things like turn the flashlight on and off, send out the emergency tone, things like that. Um, I don't know what it's programmed to do uh, from the factory, so I just, I'm, I pressed it. It doesn't do anything right now. Uh, and this here is just an indicator light. This will come on when you are breaking squelch, stuff like that. On the very front panel, we have this button again. This goes from our VFO to our channel mode. This button right underneath it is our Bluetooth button. So this turns our Bluetooth on and off. If you are not actively using Bluetooth, I would just turn it off, honestly, because uh, that should save you a little bit of battery life. You can see here on the screen, right next to that little music note, that Bluetooth symbol comes on and off when I press that. And then right under here, we have our A, B, and this switches us from A to B right there. Now on the screen, we do have a couple things. We have a battery indicator. Here we have, uh, we know that we are currently on high power and we are transmitting on wide FM instead of narrow FM. Right next to that on the screen, we have a little uh, indicator of uh, signal strength. Again, take it with a grain of salt. And then we just have a pretty standard keypad right here. Menu function, if I press the menu. menu. Once I press menu, I get on screen right here, and then I can just scroll through these. If you've ever used a Baofeng or similar, this will look pretty familiar because mm, many of them are pretty, pretty close to the same. So here we can go from transmit power high, and we're going to go ahead and turn this down to um, mid. So, easy way to do that. Once I find the menu item that I would like to use, press menu again. This will allow me to change using my up and down button. Hit the menu again, and that will say, that will confirm and put my change into effect. So I'm gonna make sure go this back down. I'm gonna go back to mid. And the number one thing I usually do, and that's to find Option number 14. Option number 14 is going to turn that voice on and off. Unless you need the voice, it'll probably drive uh, crazy pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and hit menu, turn that off, hit menu again to confirm, and that will turn off the voices. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program in the uh, 2 meter simplex calling frequency, which is 146520. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to VFO mode. And then I'm going to type in 146520. This brings me up to 146520. Now, if I would like to go ahead and turn this into a memory channel, and again, this is pretty easy. If you've owned a Baofeng or any similar radio, you should know how to do this by now. I'm hoping. If I would like to program this frequency into memory, it's very easy to do. If I go ahead and hit the menu button, I'm going to look for me memo. I'm going to look for menu item number 25. Menu item 25 is memory, and it should have on there CH001. That just means channel 1. So if I hit menu, I'm going to scroll to whatever channel I would like to put this in. Once I hit menu again, it's going to save that to memory channel number 1. So I can check that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and hit my VFO uh, channel menu again. And now we can see here, 146.52, channel 1. So if I up and down, you can see that that is now committed to that channel. So if I go back to VFO mode again, this time I'm going to type in 44, whoop. This time I'm going to type in 446.000. This is actually the UHF calling frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and hit menu. Hit menu again. I'm going to sc scroll to channel 2. Hit menu to confirm. And now that is saved into channel 2. So here we can see channel 2, channel 1. All right, well, what if I want to program a repeater in? Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, program a repeater in here real quick. Uh, the first repeater I would like to program in is the North Shore Radio Club's UHF repeater. That repeater is on 442-725 with a positive offset. This also has a PL tone of 114.8. If you're ever in the Chicagoland area and looking for a repeater to hop on, 
I would suggest this one. There, we have quite a few good repeaters in the Chicagoland area, but this is one of the wide coverage repeaters that we have here. Uh, this is actually located on the north shore of Lakeshore Drive, so on the north side of um, right along, so it's actually located right along Lake Michigan, and it's actually on a high-rise building, so the antenna sits at like 500 feet or something like that. Uh, the repeater transmits at 80 watts, so this is a fairly wide coverage repeater uh, in the Chicagoland area. But what do I do if I would like to uh, program this? So I'm back here in VFO mode, and I'm going to go ahead and type in the frequency of the repeater. This is the output, 442725. Let's see if there's any activity right now. Nope, nothing on the, no one on the repeater just yet. Now in order to uh, finish this off, I have to tell the radio that this has a positive offset. And remember on UHF, our standard offset is five megahertz. So the input of the repeater is actually at 447725. And then we need to go ahead and set our um, PL tone as well. So in order to do that, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through the menu items till I find menu item number 13. Menu item 13 is our transmit CTCSS tone. This is what we're going to do to set our PL to 114.8. So I'm going to go ahead and press menu again. I'm going to scroll through this till I hit 114.8. So we have that. I'm going to go ahead and hit menu again to confirm. That sets that in. The next thing we have to do is we need to find our offset. Offset is currently set to zero. But we need to go ahead and set our offset. Our offset's currently set to zero, but we need to go ahead and set our offset to five megahertz. So in order to do this, I actually have to type in zero five zero zero zero, and that will change it to five megahertz. If you try to type in just five, it's gonna wanna put you to 50 megahertz offset, and we can't do that. So make sure on your offset, you type in zero five zero zero zero. So now we have an offset of five megahertz. The next thing we need to do is set the direction of the offset. So this repeater has a positive offset, which means we need to go ahead and set that to positive. Now this is a little bit different. If we scroll down to menu item number 23, it says direction. We need to go to plus, or we want that to be plus. So now if I set that, hit exit, now if I transmit, this should transmit on 447725, and we should key up the repeater. There we go. So now that I confirm that that is actually indeed working on the repeater, I'm going to go to menu again. I'm always really bad at which way to scroll. I need to scroll through to the memory memory somewhere where are you there we go memory and we're going to commit this to channel three so i went to memory channel three i'm going to go ahead and confirm that now that is programmed into my memory channel three exit i'm going to come back to channel mode now i have my three channels set channel one is the two meter calling frequency channel two is the uhf calling frequency 70 centimeter and then here we have the North Shore Radio Club uh, UHF repeater. All in all, programming this, this radio from the front panel isn't too bad. It's no worse than programming a radio from the front panel of any radio that you can pretty much pick up, whether it's a Baofeng, whether it's a, uh, another TID radio, or you're using, a, say, a, a Yezu or a Kenwood. In the next video, I'm going to show how to use the app in order to program this because that has a couple really interesting features in it, and honestly, it makes it super easy to program. Again, I like to see how to use the front panel of a radio because what if my phone's dead? What if my phone's broken? What if I the Bluetooth isn't working? Um, all of those are kind of nice to know in case the technology side of stuff it doesn't work. Uh, so far on this radio, decent form factor. I like the USB-C charging. Uh, no harder to program than any other radio I've programmed. The display, it's okay. It's colorful, you know, it's color screen. It's fairly bright. Um, would I like it to be bigger and brighter? Yeah, but I feel like I've gotten a little spoiled because my go-to radio is normally my Yezu FT3. And that has a really big um, 
it displays the frequency really big. It's a nice big display. It's touch screen. So I've been using that for several years now, and I feel like I've gotten pretty spoiled on it. So uh, I would like a little bit better screen. Speaker quality seems to be okay so far. Um, I'm going to do a transmit and a receive test in a, in a video where we test the power. Knower weather radio. It works. You know, no complaints there. Um, FM broadcast, it's nice. It's nice to have. Uh, you know, if you're able to, uh, to be able to listen in and out. No aircraft receive. Yeah, okay. Uh, not the end of the world. So that's the TID Radio TDH8. So far, not too bad. Um, $62 is the price asking on this, and uh, we'll see how it works when I do a couple tests with it. So stay tuned for my next couple videos. I'm going to have at least two more videos on this. Uh, the first one, we're going to take a look at the app and how to use the app uh, because it's pretty nice and it's pretty simple. We'll say pretty simple. But the app's really nice to be able to uh, do the Bluetooth because it has a couple cool functions on it. The other one we're going to do is we're going to do some transmit receive tests with this and uh, test it out, see how it actually sounds and see how it sounds on the other end. And we're going to test the power output because they advertise 10 watts. We're going to see if we're actually getting 10 watts out of this. So thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, 73.